Hey everyone, welcome to the Free White North. Uh, today we're actually gonna go out and do something pretty cool. Um, I've had the opportunity to participate in lots of different action shooting sports here in Canada, uh, but I've not had a chance to shoot 3-Gun yet. And 3-Gun is really, really cool. It's kind of considered the epitome of all shooting sports because it's tough, because you have to deal with three different uh, weapons. You have to deal with pistol, you have to deal with shotgun, and a carbine like an AR-15. Um, so it's going to be really cool, it's going to be fun, we're going to check it out. I'm going to meet up with a guy named Taylor who is uh, who runs the Action Shooting League over at our uh, home club, which is the Buffalo Target Shooters Association, BTSA. And he's going to actually show us around, show us how he develops the stages, how he runs the matches, what's all involved from an equipment perspective, from firearms that you need and suggested, uh, it's kind of what's recommended. He's going to show us exactly what you need. To run your first match from the equipment to the belt setup to all the holsters and all the different rigs for holding shotgun shells like the shotgun caddies and he's going to actually do a little bit of a run through of each individual uh, course of our course of fire um, how to best attack it and as a demo for a first time shooter which i am going to be actually as well so this is going to be my first time running any kind of three gun match whatsoever so it's going to be helpful for, even for me uh, for somebody who's never done it before um, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully you get a lot out of it. Hopefully you're going to learn something. And the goal of this particular video is to teach you what it's like to shoot a three-gun match in Canada, what it's going to take, what kind of gear you need, and to dispel any myths or any fears you might have about coming out. The shooting community is unbelievably welcoming. Uh, if you have a jam, people are going to offer you to use their firearm if you need to. If you have something's malfunctioning, they're going to give you theirs, no questions asked. People are going to give you ammo if you run out. It's an unbelievable community, extremely welcoming. There's people of all ages, all races, all backgrounds, all income levels. It's an extremely wide berth of the society, like a really good cross section. And everybody's extremely friendly and welcoming. So if you have an opportunity, especially if you're in the Southern Alberta area, check out your local three gun league. Alberta is the hotbed of three gun in all of Canada. Uh, so definitely a good place to be uh, if you want to check it out and get into the sport. But really, all in all, watch this video. Hopefully you learn a lot. Hopefully you get something out of it. And if you do, let me know in the comment section and we'll try to make it a little bit better if we didn't quite cover it all off. So today here with the uh, Buffalo Target Shooters Association Action Shooting League on, it takes place every Sunday. So I figured it would be a good opportunity for me to try it out for the first time ever. I've never really shot three gun. You guys know that I've done IPSC and uh, Steel Challenge and USPSA before, but never done three gun and I've been meaning to do it for about a year. So I figured it was a good opportunity to check it out and uh, had an opportunity to meet uh, Taylor for the first time in person. So this is Taylor Reich. He's the organizer of this event here. and. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll kick it over to him in a sec to explain kind of exactly what 3-Gun is, what it consists of, what the, what's the gear that's required from a firearms perspective and also everything that's on his belt right now. And then we're also going to go over a uh, sample run through of this course afterwards and he's going to show you exactly what you need to look for, how it's scored and, and uh, what, uh, what techniques and um, approaches you might need for it. So Taylor, take it away. So what exactly is 3-Gun? What are we looking for? Uh, when you're explaining it to somebody for the very first time. So three gun, uh, it's an action shooting sport where we use three different guns. Typically we use the term multi-gun, but three gun is a lot more common. So we use rifle, pistol, and shotgun. Typically a semi-auto shotgun, a semi-auto rifle, and a self-loading semi-auto pistol. So we engage targets uh, in a course of fire, um, dumping our guns as we go, drawing our guns as we go. Uh, certain targets are to be engaged by certain guns. So it's a very dynamic environment. Nice. So for people who don't know what a semi-auto rifle might look like, typically that's an AR-15 platform? Typically, yeah. Okay. yeah. Most guys will run an AR-15. You see a bunch of guys out here with a XCR or a, some of the other non-restricted yeah. platforms. Nice. Uh, but for the most part, AR-15 is king. Okay. And um, obviously, so now we've gotten into kind of some of the uh, firearms equipment. So obviously, AR-15 platform is more or less the most common. And as far as shotguns, what do you guys typically see? Do you see tube fed, you see pump action, what, what kind of stuff are we talking about? Yeah, so that depends on your division. A lot of guys will start with a pump action shotgun. Uh, if you run a magazine fed shotgun, that's gonna put you in open division. Typically our three divisions are limited, practical, or tack ops, and open division, or unlimited. Okay. So unlimited, you have almost no restrictions on your gear, other than the legal restrictions that you have on your magazine capacity. So you'll see a lot of the mag fed shotguns in open division and limited and tack ops you'll see a lot of tube fed shotguns. A lot of guys will, like I said, start with their pump actions. Yeah. But uh, in terms of semi-autos, there's a wide range. It's not like there's one gun that's right, king. For sure. You yeah. see a lot of uh, the Remington Versamax, Stoger M3K, uh, Benelli M2, uh, the Breda B12i, uh, among others. 
Nice. Okay, awesome. Um, what about everything outside of the shotguns? You're looking at pistols, right? Mm -hmm. Anything basically that's in the IPSC or USPSA production categories that are yeah. generally used, or is that anything that can kind of carry optics, or does that put you into the unlimited category? Like, yeah. It all depends on what kind of category you shoot, decide to shoot for. Yeah, guns? yeah you, you want to pick your division and then build your kit accordingly. Most guys will start with limited because it's the cheapest. You don't have to have a, a high price variable power optic. You can start with a red dot. And for a lot of matches, that's all you really need. Once you get out to five to seven hundred yard targets, yeah. you don't see those very often, but you do. That's that's when you want your uh, your variable power for sure. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, optics on on handguns automatically puts you into open division. Uh, but you will see uh, again in the U.S. at least the king is the 2011 pistol, so a 1911 style with a double strap. But the most common pistol that you'll see in Canada is the CZ Shadow. Two. Yep. Absolutely, and yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, a lot of crossover with Ipsic. Guys with his Shadow Two or Shadows, uh, but you'll see everything. Uh, you'll see guys running 1911s. I run a, a Sig P320 Striker Fire. Got a lot of Striker Fire and a lot of Glocks, a lot of M&Ps. Okay, perfect, awesome. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the typical kind of belt loadout, because I know for me, for Ipsic, I really all I have to worry about is my holster mm -hmm. and my mags, and that's it, like the, my pistol mags. So tell me a little bit about everything you got going on here. So we really pack our belts full in 3-Gun. We got a lot of ammo to carry. So you're gonna have your magazine, uh, your pistol magazine holsters, rifle magazine holsters, and then for those of us in TAC Ops or Limited, you're gonna have shot shell caddies. And so uh, you wanna have these set up for quad loading or dual loading. That's a technique that you're gonna have to learn if you, yep. if you get into those divisions. <laughs> And so we've got shell caddies, and these are two eight round shot caddies. If you have stages that are more than that, a lot of guys will run chest rigs, but two eight rounds is what you should be going for. Some guys will run two 12s or right. one eight. Uh, and then you, you want at least three pistol magazines uh, and probably two rifle magazines, depending on the rifle magazines that you choose to use. Right. But that's your typical belt setup. And then uh, any kind of holster that's uh, even a level one retention, most guys will run a level two. Are Serpa um, style holsters allowed in? Serpa style holsters are technically allowed. They're, yeah. they're still frowned upon, yeah. uh, especially now that they've been banned by USPSA. Yeah. Uh, you won't see them very much anymore. Yeah, in, the reason why I asked that is because the level two retention that Serpa yeah. offers, but I'm like, yeah, that's generally a bad idea. So yeah, typically kind of the uh, yeah the, the level two holsters that you'll see is like Weber Tactical or uh, some of the um, Red Hill Tactical or other custom made Safari Land, nice. stuff like that. Okay. So apart from this league, what uh, what other matches can we expect to have in kind of Western Canada, Southern Alberta, mm -hmm. um, Saskatchewan, BC kind of stuff? Like what are the different leagues that are around and uh, what organization kind of generally, I guess, oversees all the uh, competition in Western Canada? Well, we don't have a standardized league across Western Canada, but Alberta is definitely the hub for three gun. Uh, and so we got the Northwest three gun uh, league up in, in BC and a little bit in Alberta. We have Mighty Peace three gun league in Northern Alberta. And so that's gonna be Prince George, uh, Grand Prairie, and I believe there's one other location. Uh, we have, we are now actually part of the Southern Alberta multi gun league. So that's us here at the BTSA. We have Lethbridge and then we have Medicine Hat. And so we, all three of us run three gun nation rules. You'll find different rule sets in different areas of the country. And then some of the major matches is the uh, Battle of Alberta up at Chaz. Chaz has their own league. They're uh, just west of Edmonton. So that's the Canadian Historical Arms Society, yes. right up in Edmonton. Okay. Yeah, no. that's Chaz. And then, uh, so that's the Battle of Alberta. They have that in June 8th and 9th, I believe. Uh, the other major matches is the Wapiti Three Gun Championship up in Grand Prairie. Uh, we have the Battle of the Badlands down in Medicine Hat. That's a Three Gun Nation Pro Series. And then we also have Prairie Fire, and that's typically regarded as the biggest match in Canada. That's held out in Saskatoon. That is held usually in the middle of the summer uh, in July. Nice. And I believe they have a league there as well. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about Three Gun Nation and kind of the, how it's structured and the rule sets mm -hmm. and how, it's, how it may differ from something like USPSA multi-gun and yeah. IPSC multi-gun now. Because pretty much every single organization now has a multi-gun division yeah. to it or aspect to it. So. Yeah, so USPSA is what we used to run. It's anyone who's familiar with USPSA or, or IPSC will know it. Yeah. Three Gun's a little bit different. It was a bit of an offshoot. And there's other leagues, there's UML. Um, but the Three Gun Nation, we have different, different targets and we have a lot more options for what targets can be engaged with different guns. So for instance, our paper targets, they can be engaged with pistol, rifle, or slug from a shotgun. And any of our close range steel can be engaged with a bird shot from a shotgun or a handgun. And any long range steel can be engaged with slug, rifle, or pistol. Okay. Okay, so what we got here is we've got a pretty advanced stage uh, on a 50 meter bay. So we have nine paper targets and we have 16 steel. 
So we got our start box here and similar to other shooting sports, we have a boundary line on this yellow rope and the red uh, two by twos. And so we have a start box here, we start and we engage these targets as they become available to us while we're not breaking 180. And so we wanna keep all the targets in front of us and you wanna be engaging targets uh, with consideration on your round count. And so for a lot of a lot of these platforms, our round count's gonna be a lot less than the people in the US. And so you wanna plan your reloads accordingly. So as a shooter, I'm gonna be clearing these, these paper as I go. And since I know I only have nine paper, that's at the max about 18 shots. And so I can clear all these about 14, and then I can do a reload for this last one, and then I dump. I have the opportunity to dump here or the other two tables, but I chose to go here step here because I have a clear shot at all four of these poppers one, and the swinger. I'm going to come around and load. I'm going to finish off that popper. So you see I'm in position here so that I can attack that target and these two knockdown steals in one and I'm right at the jump box picking up my shotgun to finish off the swinger. Then I move up and I still have six rounds of my shotgun and I have my plate rack and that's the last targets I need to engage. So I finish those off and I'm clear. Well, that's it for today. I think, uh, I hope you guys have learned as much as I did. This is actually my first shot at three gun and uh, I've learned so much from Taylor. So thank you so much for taking thank you thank you the time. Yeah, and uh, this, educating everybody uh, on the channel and hopefully we can uh, get some more people involved in the sport and 
spread the word and the more of us shooters there are in Canada, the harder it is for them to take everything away from us. So. That's true, yeah. Yeah, awesome, thanks so much. Yeah.